Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us say the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, whose Son Jesus is the Good Shepherd of your people, grant that when we hear his voice we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all, as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Word of God, word of life. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A reading from the first letter of Peter. It is a credit to you if, being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you do right, and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that, free from sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord 
Jesus said, Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Gracious God, take my lips and speak with them. Take our minds and think with them. Set our hearts on fire for Christ's sake. Amen. I read and hear today's Gospel with both great joy on one hand and a collection of unhappy emotions on the other when I think about Christian history, regret, disappointment, indignation, even anger. So today we have our coming to Christ and faith explored by two metaphors. First is Jesus as shepherd. I am the shepherd, he says in the verse right after our gospel this morning. But the Pharisees don't get the metaphor. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand him. So he offers another, which is arguably even more difficult. I am the gate for the sheep. It is the metaphor of Jesus as the gate that's on my mind this morning. The metaphors are where the brain and the heart of faith meet. And for better or worse, they're often the battlegrounds of faith. So let us consider Jesus as the gate. For example, is Jesus the gate open or closed? I much prefer, and. I think it's obvious that Jesus does too. I prefer Jesus the open gate. Whoever enters by me, he says, will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. And he continues, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Arguably, though, there is Jesus the closed gate as well. Anyone, he says, who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. I know the metaphor doesn't exactly say that the gate is closed. The thieves and bandits may have ignored the open gate and climbed over the fence for their own thieving reasons. But historically, the church has had a strong tendency to think of itself as a closed community of the righteous. And often the results have been ugly. All churches shelter some of those who have bumped into closed gates and been bruised by them. They have heard it said silently or aloud, you are not really one of us. 
They've been bruised trying to get in and in trying to get out. And there are gatekeepers who specialize in closing gates and guarding them. I think you could all find examples in the church of your choice, the denomination of your choice. One result is that churches, more often than we think, are visited by wary people wounded in one way or another by their encounters with churches and Christianity. They're looking in hope for an open gate. See, a while back, a pastor named Peter Marty wrote this in Christian Century magazine. At the top of the wound list, injuring the faith and spirit of many innocent believers, is the encounter with what I call arrogant certainty. When Christian people convert, he goes on, when they convert their spiritual confidence into theological certainty and then apply that certainty to their account of God, faith becomes ideological. Humility all but vanishes. Innocent people end up being damaged or dismissed by the arrogance. Such people, I would say, talk from their own sheepfold and its gate is firmly closed. There is something about certainty that makes Christianity very unchristian, says the wonderful Christian novelist and essayist Marilyn Robinson, and she's right. Simone Weil, the profound and difficult French mystic, according to author and Episcopal priest Barbara Brown Taylor, had an almost overwhelming desire to be baptized. Weil nonetheless refused baptism, Taylor writes, quote, saying that she could not seek her own soul's safety in any church that denied salvation to those who did not belong to it. There you seem to have the stark choice between the end points of different kinds of Christian experience and Christian teaching, of the wounded on the one hand and the separated on the other. In the history of the church, closed gate thinking has led to a two mouthfuls of words of very powerful and different ideas. One is supersessionism, and the other is triumphalism. Supersessionism, which comes from the more familiar word superseded, is the belief among more fundamentalist Christians who hold not just that Judaism has been supplanted by Christianity, but that the covenant between God and Israel as his chosen people has been abrogated. Christianity has superseded the earlier faith historically. And triumphalism goes even further, holding that a particular religion is superior and reigns triumphant over the world. Christianity has a long history of asserting this, although it's not the only one who does so. Although it now recently does it much less often and less confidently in the last couple of centuries. Pope Francis himself has preached against triumphalism, even though it was for centuries the doctrine of the Catholic Church. Triumphalism, the Pope has asserted, is not of the Lord. The Lord came to earth humbly 
He lived his life for 30 years. He grew up like a normal child. He experienced the trial of work and the trial of the cross. Then in the end, he resurrected. May the Lord save us from the fantasies of triumphalism, he concluded. The daily journey in the presence of God, this is the way of the Lord. So listen to the Jesus of the open gate one more time. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. I come that they may have life and have it abundantly. May the gates of our hearts and the gates of our lives always stay open to God's abundant life for everyone, however and wherever they find it. Amen. Let us say together the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours, and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. Forgive us our sins, both things we have done and those we have left undone. God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives, 
We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Amen. There are a few announcements for this week. Online giving is available through parishgiving.org and paypal.com. At slatechurch.org, our website, you can currently find a link to parishgiving.org. You can also send your, your envelopes to the church through the postal service. However, we strongly encourage you to switch to one of the online giving options to keep things moving a little more efficiently. The virtual Sunday service is being posted at 9 a.m. for everybody's convenience. This is instead of the regular worship schedule of 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. So it's just the one service streaming. And the views so far have ranged between 100 and 140. Bible study is currently being offered on Zoom and will continue to be offered on the first and third Sunday of every month at 10 a.m. Uh, it's a small group, but it's been going very well so far. The Slate Book Club is also being offered on Zoom and will continue to be offered on the second and fourth Sunday of the month at 10 a.m. So Bible study is the first and the third. The book club is the second and the fourth. For both of those meetings, you can email the church if you'd like more information on how to attend. Special thanks to our participants and all who made this week's service possible. Richard Kaiser, Rick Beck, Ricardo Liriano, Isabella Reinhardt, Gabby Thomas, Victor Soros, Jonathan Bowen, and the Reverend Robert C. Smith. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God.
It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation in the calling of Israel to be your people in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. And in the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with fatness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia.